let's just maybe start with what is 49th shelf and what is your relationship to it or what role do you play in it? Sure. Um, 49th Shelf is a project that began um, way back in 2009. It's a website and the creation of the website was spurred by um, a, a study that we did, a research study um, back then for the Department of Canadian Heritage that was looking at how consumers were changing in their book buying habits and how they were relating to books and whether they were interested in um, reading Canadian authors. And um, the result of that was that, of course, they were changing in their behaviors. They were going online a lot more. There was a lot of interest in uh, Canadian authors and sometimes um, an inability to locate those in bookstores and to find Canadian authors. So it was a project that was uh, intended to raise the discoverability of uh, Canadian authors and publishers. It's a website, it's uh, powered by data. So there are now more than 130,000 titles, Canadian titles in the database. And on top of that database, that, that sort of fuels all of the books that you'll see in there. On top of that, we then run an editorial program that uh, furthers, further highlights um, the books, um, often the books of the year, you know, the, um, the new releases in a year, um, we'll focus on that in our editorial program. And then on top of that, we have a social media program that draws people to the site. Um, so that's a bit of the content marketing for the site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 11 years old is, a, is quite old for a website, especially for a kind of project site like this. Yeah. It is. It's it's a uh, it's a passion project. It's a project of the Association of Canadian Publishers, the ACP. Mm -hmm. But the people who have been running it and working on it have been stable. It's been stable for all that time. Um, we're all very uh, very devoted to it and unlikely to ever part ways <laughs> with mm -hmm. it. We love it so much. So Carrie, our um, editor, has been on on the team since two thousand eleven. I've been working with 49 Shelf for since its inception, as well as my partner and husband Craig, and our columnists have also been with us for years. Wow! Yeah. So uh, I'm curious to learn a little bit more about the kind of editorial approach to the site. So as you say, you have like this database of books. You mm -hmm. also have when I visit the homepage, you've got these little kind of buckets of like five uh, new uh, nine fascinating new feminist books or. Mm -hmm. um, short story collections and this sort of thing. What, mm -hmm. how do you uh, take decisions around what gets featured and how long does it live on the site? And is there kind of a editorial calendar in that mode? Sure. Um, well, when I think of the homepage, uh, it's a little bit of a smorgasbord, smorgasbord, however you say mm -hmm. that word. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to highlight different books, different kinds of publishers, and themes um, through those little buckets that you were talking about at the, mm -hmm. at the front. And so we're putting them, we're organizing that way because different readers come to the site with different interests. Mm. And so we wanna put as many little tantalizing nuggets on the site for them. And then hopefully they'll go to those spots of interest, but then along the way, they might be interested in something else and then they'll find a book that way as well. Mm -hmm. We rotate the homepage every week um, and when I think of the homepage this week, um, I'm trying to think there are on that page uh, that looks, it, it's sort of deceptive in terms of what it looks like um, because you just see, you don't see all that much in terms of the buckets and, mm. and the blog or whatever, but behind that is the fact that at least 40 publishers are currently rep represented on that homepage, this mm. week's homepage. Um, they are from all over Canada and from all sorts of presses, large and small. Mm -hmm. um, there are at least 200 authors that are on that web page. Um, mm -hmm. Multiple genres from short stories, memoirs, novels, poetry, design, kids. Um, there are different themes. There's Right now there's feminism on there, as you mentioned, and we have a blog post up by our children's librarian right now about Orange Shirt Day. So helping teachers and librarians find books that would help them to teach on that kind of a day. Mm -hmm. We've got indigenous works, 
books aimed at teachers and librarians. We've got booksellers picks, authors reading recommendations. So that homepage is created to um, try to help to spotlight all that in a kind of manageable way and an exciting way for consumers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, English Canada only, or is yeah. there a French? Yeah, English Canada only. Mm -hmm. Is that because the Publishers Association is English Canadian only? That's right. And, yeah. and Quebec has its own um, uh, vehicles for spotlighting yeah. their own books as well. Do you get, uh, I'm just curious, do you get pitched like media by publishers where people pitch you to feature your feature their content on their homepage or yeah. on the blog or that sort of thing? Yeah, so that uh, relates to the editorial ca uh, calendar. So mm. we create an annual editorial calendar and then we make publishers aware of that editorial calendar um, several points during the year. And mm. so we would, um, for example, we would say this month we're doing books by Newfoundland authors or while well, it's around Valentine's Day. So let's have books about great breakups or mm. terrible breakups. Mm -hmm. um, books by, new books by indigenous authors. So we would just set themes that somehow, um, that, are, that, that relate to specific days and times of the year, but also relate to what we would wanna cover all through the year. And then publishers look at that and they, and they say, okay, which books would fit around mm -hmm. those themes and they would then pitch us exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so is your inbox or perhaps your editor's inbox overflowing with pitches then? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it is. I mean, yeah. uh, Carrie gets those pitches and then she tends to, to work with that part of the content. And then mm -hmm. I do my own work with lists that just uh, goes beyond those pitches and mm -hmm. spotlights books that might not come through uh, mm -hmm. by those pitches. Yeah. I see. Uh, so speaking of those, maybe you could talk a bit about how you feature, maybe how you even discover new and emerging authors. That would be through the publishers. Mm -hmm. um, Carrie throughout the year does these amazing um, previews. So fall books previews, um, and she c covers everything. She does um, one for fiction, one for poetry, uh, kids. And so we become aware through all of the publishers catalogs of what's coming up. And then, you know, as it just becomes very organic, you can start to see the kinds of books that are gaining traction, other people are talking about, um, and what are exciting debuts. Oh, I, always, I always say that word wrong, debuts. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's just, you know, an, just a current, there's a buzz that helps you figure out which of the, the new books by new authors are really worth paying attention to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, speaking of authors, you know, one of the, certainly of the authors, I've been an author myself, but I'm also a marketer. So I understood that when I finished the book, only half my work was kind of done. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I wonder, you know, when you or your team has interactions with authors, uh, you know, do you find that a lot of them are keen to market their books or are keen to contribute or are they I mean I'm sure it's a it's a whole breadth of authors who are just deeply uninterested in promoting their book because they didn't get into the work for that and then authors mm -hmm. who are super keen on promoting the book yeah, that's is that the kind of spread you see yeah but we mostly work with the publishers themselves so the publishers mm -hmm. are the go-between so they want their books to be spotlighted and then mm -hmm. they will go out to willing authors mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. those authors are generally very willing and so what will happen is that we'll, for example, we'll do a blog post or we'll do a list. We'll put that out there on social media, Facebook, Twitter, sometimes Instagram, though I'm not uh, regular enough with Instagram. I need to get that going on a little bit more. But anyway, we will put um, a, uh, a mention up on there, like come to the site to see this. Mm -hmm. We'll tag all the publishers and the authors. Mm -hmm. And in that way, we're starting the conversation where we're saying, it's out there, let's run with this. And then mm. we're dependent on the collaboration of those publishers and authors to keep that going and to keep getting that, that post or that list in front of as many readers as they can. Mm -hmm. And so that's where mm -hmm. their self-promotion comes in and their interest comes in because we function as a hub um, mm -hmm. for, for various stakeholders around a book. And uh, yeah, the more people run with it, the more readers get to see it. And on social, do you find that, um, I mean, I guess you would find that, I mean, I, for example, Twitter, which seems to be the home 
the home base of a lot of publishers and authors. Mm -hmm. uh, I most often see uh, the authors I'm aware are just good at Twitter. They're just excellent, mm -hmm. you know, native Twitter people sort of yeah, thing, right? And right. so I imagine you observe that there are authors who are super skilled and have a super engaged following and then other authors who retweet something you put out and you know gets one sad little like or something yeah definitely but um especially in a year like this year where mm. it's so difficult for authors and publishers to reach their normal audiences because you know there are no um in-person festivals and the readings and everything that are so crucial for book success um there is just such excitement about when we profile a book that we are excited to do it, especially this year, because it feels so important. And then for them, when we put it on social media, they're also just so excited that this is a, this is a, a vehicle for them to gain awareness in a, in a year where it's very difficult mm -hmm. to do that for a lot of books. And so, um, yeah, it stimulates a very sort of excited and engaged um, collaboration effort this year. It's pretty, it's pretty exciting. So... Mm -hmm they're doing a lot of work for their own books for sure. So and one of the things I should say, yeah. one of the things that's very exciting this year is that our editor, Carrie, Carrie Claire um, has created a program. Um, and by, by program, I mean, it's a series of uh, blog posts under the heading called Launchpad. Hmm. And this is specifically to address the fact that there are fewer um, launch events uh, hmm. available Mm -hmm. to um, to to uh, publishers and to authors. And so uh, every week or a couple times a week, uh, she's now done over 75. There will be more than 100. She does these launch pad um, episodes where she'll interview through text. She will interview an author and then we'll have a quick one meet, minute reading from the author. Mm -hmm. So nothing too long, nothing too on onerous for a reader to be able to grab on and go, Hey, this sounds like an exciting book. And so that's definitely been pandemic specific and, and really exciting. Yeah. I'm looking at one here by mm -hmm. uh, about the barren grounds. By yeah. David a. Robertson, a yes. graphic novel. Looks it looks fantastic. Like. It does look great. Yeah. Yeah. So um, with regards to social media, I, I am, is it accurate to say that your kind of social media posts largely follow your editorial content on the site in terms yes. of the correlation? Mm -hmm. And um, do you, I mean, one thing I'm always curious about, um, and one thing we talked about in class recently was this like, you know, question of, um, kind of one of the promises of social media was that it would be like this two-way conversation between mm -hmm. uh, organizations by which I mean companies or NGOs or governments or whoever, uh, organizations and people. Um, but like practically speaking, um, it's really it's really become a broad, a largely a broadcast medium. People respond, but the, I mean, I think basically that the two challenges I see with organizations either they are too big and they cannot handle the volume of responses or they are too small and they do not have the staff time to handle the incoming questions, even if it's just a few, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. the, that staff person has so many other priorities. And so uh, you've talked a bit about the kind of you sitting as a hub or being part of a network that is the authors and the publishers and maybe even bookstores or other, other stakeholders, if you like, in, the, in your sector. Um, how do you see social media working for you in terms of, you know, does it mostly function as a broadcast mechanism for you or is it, is it more of a dialogue? I think it's kind of both. Mm -hmm. um, it is, we do broadcast, I mean, as much as I would love to have the staff time to be able to be more of a two-way conversation, we don't. And mm -hmm. so um, we put up the posts and we are um, palpably excited about them. Mm -hmm. And then we will start to get responses uh, through Twitter and Facebook, and those will take on a life of their own. Mm -hmm. readers, readers will respond, authors will tweet back and forth with each other. And so it's almost like the starting point for it to be more than a broadcast. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we can only be responsible for that, for the most part, for that initial um, outlay and then 
we are always quite delighted by how much life it, it takes on. Mm -hmm. um, and as much as we can, we'll be, you know, you know, thank you for retweeting and um, you will try to retweet uh, readers really interesting posts or um, excited reactions to a book. We'll, we'll try to do that. We try to feature if, if uh, a reader has put up a really interesting post on the site themselves, which readers can do. If you're mm. a member of 49th Shelf, you can make your own book lists. Mm. Um, and so, for example, on the homepage this week, we have something called this, I think it's the Silent Book Reading Club, the, yeah, their favorite right. picks. And this is a really interesting thing, thing that's been covered, I think, by CBC at least, where a group of readers um, meets together and they don't discuss the book necessarily, but they all uh, come together quietly to read together mm. and they form this community this way. And uh, it's just a different way of enjoying books and enjoying, oh, hi, that's my pet. That's great. Uh, yeah. And so it's an interesting list. So we'll pop it up there and then, you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah, no, that is super interesting. Do you mm -hmm. ever encounter, I imagine, you are, you're kind of in a, a booster positive role. Do you encounter much negativity online? No. Ever? No, that's, I, I'd say that's fortunate. I mean, it's, it's a function of where you sit in the ecosystem maybe, but I think it's fortunate mm -hmm. that you don't It's have very to... fortunate. Yeah. No, there's, there is not any. Um, and, and we make a really, a part of uh, that might also uh, have to do with the fact that we're not a review site. So we're mm -hmm. never really posting anything that we're not happy about <laughs> like mm. we we're all of our posts were um supportive of um and uh yeah yeah i don't know why else but we no, do, no, I, we're I just excited that's... and i think we've been doing it for long enough that people trust us mm. um mm -hmm. and trust the voice um and so and we're not corporate and we're not canned and mm. everything that we pick to select is not a computer algorithm. It's mm. our, our work. And mm. so I think we're just lucky that people are very appreciative of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, it's, it's a uh, human curated. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I was going to say, and as you, I, I know you really work to strike a balance between very small publishers and the big established ones too. Yeah. In terms of what you feature. Yes, definitely, um, because sometimes smaller presses uh, have uh, can be, well, as we know, when you go to a bookstore in Canada, a lot of the titles that you will see are imported uh, or, um, sorry, I've got another animal trying to join our call. <laughs> That's our no new worries. dog. No yeah, worries. and uh, yeah, so we have uh, a mission to, um, to put the same amount of spotlight on small press books that are often just as good, but maybe have smaller marketing budgets. Um, what we want them to, to sit alongside on the exact same level playing field as the, as the larger, you know, multinational press books or, mm -hmm. yeah, or, yeah, we, we just, we think there's room for everyone. And, and that's part of our function is to make that pretty clear to readers that these are, these are just as, exciting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Equal, uh, a level playing field as well yeah mm -hmm. um and then w maybe uh a question a slightly meta question but uh, do you and you may have no time for this too but how do you think about promoting the site itself obviously the site is about promoting canadian books but like would you do anything or uh, have you have you done things in the past in terms of promoting the site overall um what have we done well, I, part of, I guess part of the answer to that is that in, um, that first of all, it's content marketing. It's the good, good yeah. content that we put yeah, out yeah. there mm -hmm. that um, then ripples out in different ways that are hard to measure. So many different ways that people can become aware of 49th Shelf, whether it's just because we focused on a specific uh, category of book or, um, or yeah, I, there are just a lot of different ways that people can mm -hmm. become aware of the site. But we also do partnerships sometimes with um, programs that have large audiences of their own. So the Geller Prize, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. um, we also partner with the Governor General's Literary Awards mm -hmm. to shine a light on those programs and the shortlisted authors. And so mm -hmm. at specific points in the year, we kind of get to piggyback on mm -hmm. their audiences as well. So and mm -hmm. vice versa. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I feel like um, when talking to small business or smaller charities and nonprofit organizations, I feel like an, an opportunity they often overlook or don't sufficiently kind of optimize for are those partnership opportunities mm -hmm. where they can you know, access a new audience or uh, reach an existing audience through a new channel or in a new mm -hmm. way that they otherwise wouldn't. Yeah. So the, both those, the yeah, the just in case anybody doesn't know, the Giller is another very, very prominent, the most prominent, would you say, is the Giller the, the biggest award or is the governor general's the biggest award or how do you, how do you think about those? Mm, Writers Trust is also very exciting okay. in, in many cycles. Writers love the Writers Trust. Um, it's, uh, I think it's got the most mainstream prominence, mm -hmm. I would say maybe, mm -hmm. you know, in a way that Canada Reads reached a very large proportion of readers. Mm -hmm. Um, Giller, I think Giller still has that kind of cachet, but Governor General's is still really big. Writers Trust is really big and mm -hmm. there are regional programs and, um, genre specific programs that we also highlight, whether it's mystery or, you know, the Trillium Awards mm -hmm. um, for Ontario, BC Book Prizes. Um, we are equal opportunity in terms <laughs> of, you know, just celebrating um, everyone else's celebrations of their own specific book area. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that's terrific. Is there anything else I should have asked or anything else you wanted to highlight that I didn't get to? Hmm. Um. I don't think so. I could go on and on about 49 <laughs> Shelf. I really could. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that's part of its success is it's not um, as methodologically sound maybe mm -hmm. as some mm -hmm. um, enterprises. And we have a smaller staff, but it's just been around for long enough. And the people who work on it are so passionate mm -hmm. that um, it just keeps going and getting better. And it, it steadily grows its audience. And, um, and I think there's that there's something magical about that, that can't be canned into a proper, you know, guidebook for how you do mm -hmm. marketing or, or promotion. It's, mm -hmm. you've got to have that authenticity and that, that excitement. Yeah. Passion and tenacity. It sounds like, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, that's terrific. Thank you very much for uh, talking to me and our class uh, today. They'll really appreciate this insight from the industry.